I'm James for the very kind introduction and I would like to thank all the men for the um, for their hard work and dedication in, in preparing this program. Happy Sabbath Church. It feels good to be in the house of the Lord. And today I am privileged to deliver the word entitled Adam, where are you? But before I begin, let us bow and pray. Now, Lord, take our lips and speak through them. Take our minds and think through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire with love for yourself, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thousands of years ago, as God walked through the Garden of Eden in the cool of the day, He spoke these words. Adam, where are you? And those words echoed across the garden. They reverb across the centuries, through the pages of Old Testament, through the little town Bethlehem, across the hills of Calvary. They resounded inside an empty tomb. And today, yesterday, these same words still echo and fall upon the ears of each man within the sound of my voice. Adam, where are you? These words were spoken in the third chapter of Genesis during what we generally refer to us as the fall. In Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 to 9, and I'm reading in New, version, New International Version. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from the tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say, You must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. You will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? As people think through these verses, they often come to the conclusion that it was Eve or that woman you gave to me, as Adam called her, that is resp responsible for the fall of the man. Because it was Eve who fell for the line of bull that the serpent was selling. It was Eve who took the first bite of the forbidden food. It was Eve who enticed Adam to also eat of the fruit. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wrong. <laughs> Here's the problem in that scenario. In verse 6, when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. And she also gave some to her husband, who was with her. And he ate it. He was with her. He was right there. And why was he with her? In Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, it says that the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and to keep. 
And what does it mean to tend or to keep? If we search in the dictionary, we will find a couple of meaning to those words. And to tend means to attend to by work or services, care, etc. To watch over and care for, minister to. And keep means provide for the sustenance of someone, provide someone with regular supply or commodity, own and look for after. So it means to watch over and care for, to guard and to protect. Adam, where are you? Sadly, Adam had abandoned his post and he left his bride to battle the serpent, a battle that she was not equipped to fight. Look at verses 16 and 17 of Genesis chapter 2. And the Lord God commanded the man, Adam, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may eat free, but for the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. So God spoke these words directly to Adam, not to Eve. It was Adam's responsibility to minister to his wife and instill in her that the fact that God did and did say and mean that if they eat of the fruit, they would die. It was Adam's duty to protect Eve from the evil that the serpent represented. It was Adam's job as the keeper of the garden and to guard and protect it from lies of the serpent. And Adam failed. He failed God. He failed the garden. He failed Eve. And lastly, he failed himself. And it is that failure that brought forth the guilt and shame that questions the man's ability to lead. And so, it was those words still sound in our ears today. Adam, where are you? For you see, each of us, just like Adam, has calling upon our life to tend and to keep. And so, sadly, sometimes, just like Adam, we all, we too have failed. This is evident when we stop and look the condition of our country, of the church and the family. We have abandoned our cause as the spiritual leaders of our homes and relegated the role to our wives. This is not only true in the home, but this serpent has reared its ugly head in the church as well. We have traded our role of spiritual leader for the title breadwinner. Don't get me wrong. It is part of tending and keeping, but it's not the main focus of our duties. Our job as the keeper of our individual gardens is to minister to our wives and children. And this is not responsible of our wives or even the church. We are responsible for keeping the negative and evil influences of the outside world out of our homes and away from all who seek refuge to there. This includes anything that enters your home through the door, over the wires, or through the air. We are to be filter of all things that come in contact with our families. Amen. The serpent gets to none of those in our church, lest it comes to us first. And as you march out to meet evil head on, know this, like Adam, we do not go at it alone. 
for just that, took animal skins and fashioned them into clothing for Adam and Eve for protection for the elements they would soon be facing. God has provided us similar protection. In Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 18, I'm reading um, international, inter, New International Version. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm. Then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil ones. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. This is the battle that we cannot afford to lose. The stakes are too high. And we as men must answer the call to battle. I challenge each of us Don your armor and take courage from the last verse I will share with you today. In chapter 1, verse 9 of Joshua, it says, This is a battle that we cannot afford to lose. I'm sorry. Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So, this afternoon, I will leave each of us with this question. Adam, where are you? And I pray we will ask God to search our heart and ask Him to show us the man He wants us to be. Are we that man? Are we where He wants us to be? Are we doing that what He wants us to do? Are we tending and keeping our garden? Let's all stand up and pray. Uh, he said, uh. Our Father, we thank you for all your word and for the eternal truths that guide us day by day. We thank you most of all for the living word, Jesus Christ, and the sureness of his presence. Teach us how to turn unto you so that our thoughts may be your thoughts and our ways be your ways. In Christ's name we pray.